Cool. Not bad for an old hundred. It's funny, people ask me, do you know how darts first began? Some believe it was on the battlefields of France in the 15th century, when the bowmen of England used to throw broken arrows at wooden targets to ease the boredom in between battles. Or the bolt from the crossbow was thrown at the end of a beer barrel, the bung being the first bullseye. Whatever the case, darts is one of the most popular indoor sports played today. 140! Well, what a result. They can't see it from there. You can say 180, because I don't often hit 180 on the television. The darting public are the greatest people in the world and we're not going to cheat for them. What about that? That's what? honesty. I can't wait, you know. Bob, for you, 140 these days is some result. Let them know you can yeah, still yeah, do yeah, it. You know, you're right there. Yeah, it's tears, isn't yeah. it? You've got to be happy. You are really deep down. I'm I mean, so we ain't going to tell the people that. this is the 58th take. No. And 56 <laughs> of the others, you hit 26, <laughs> are we, mate? <laughs> Thank you, Martin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's play now! And Yes! It's there! He wants the ball for the set. To be a perfect little devil with a dart, gather round. Based on the old English word dart, meaning, uh, well, dart, the game is now the industry of Islington and the craze of Kensington. Darts may owe its origins to the oh, battlefields of France, but its popularity comes from and will always be rooted in the public houses of England. Darts and beer go hand in hand, and the game became a favourite pastime of the working classes during the 19th century. At a time when games of chance were very much frowned upon by local magistrates because inevitably they involved gambling, darts came close to being banned. It took a demonstration in front of a local magistrate to convince him that this was a game of skill, and thus the case was dismissed. As more and more people played the game, so the implements themselves became more sophisticated. At the turn of the century, this would have been the type of dart that you would normally have found in a public house, a very basic dart made of wood, weighted at one end, normal point, and turkey feathers. It would also be found in other shapes and sizes. This is lead weighted round and is made in France and was also imported not only for public houses but also for fairgrounds. As the technology improved, the introduction of the brass dart 
occurred in about 1925-26. Again, wooden body, turkey feathers, but this time a metal brass body. By the end of the 1930s, technology had improved even more, and we saw the first all-metal dart. This was made by the Unicorn Dart Company and is called the Silver Comet. And what is particular about this, this dart is that the unique feature is that it has a small uh, cap at the end which helps to secure the darts into the body of the dart. The working man would actually have his own brass darts, sometimes provided for him by the public house, and very often they'd make their own uh, boxes to contain their darts in. After the Second World War, with the Jim Pike Company going into production, Jim Pike produced his own darts with the familiar Jim Pike fish logo, but it was also the beginning of unusual darts. This one, for example, was manufactured by the Tex Company, and it's in fact three parts. The flight detaches, the point comes out, the point is then inserted into the uh, body of the stem, is then replaced, and you can then put the dart into your pocket without damaging your clothing. And then throughout the 60s and 70s, brass darts were the most popular. They came out in different shapes and sizes, but due to the popularity of the game, novel versions came out. These, for example, are shaped like beer bottles, and these were manufactured again by Unicorn and known as the Dum Dum. By the late 1970s, brass was being replaced by tungsten, which had a, was a much more dense material, therefore the darts that were manufactured, like these ones here, could be much more narrow, and that improved the chances of obtaining that fairly elusive 180. As far as the development of the dartboard is concerned, during the Victorian period, there were two main kinds of dartboard. The first was the small concentric dartboard, which is modelled on the archery target, and the second was the random number diamond-shaped dartboard, as, as shown here. But by the turn of the 20th century, other dartboards, more complex dartboards, have been, de have been developed. And here's an example of the Fives dartboard, which was popular in the East End of London at the turn of the century, although this particular example shows the modern treble included as well. But as this game became easier to play, it was necessary for darts to become more complex to maintain its um, interest for its players. And so the number of segments was increased from 12 to 20. And this is an example of the Yorkshire dartboard, which includes the double ring, 20 scoring segments, and the bull's eye. What happened next is something peculiar to darts in terms of it being a target sport. And that is that the treble was introduced, the modern dartboard, and it effectively moved the highest scoring area, which was normally the bullseye, higher up the board to what is now the treble 20. The earliest dartboards were actually made of wood, either elm or poplar, but in some areas they used the material that was local to that area. In such cases as with the um, Burton board, where it's actually made from clay. The most modern boards of course are made from bristle. That was first introduced in 1934 and was a material called sisal which is used in the making of, of ropes but in the case of a dart board biscuits of sisal are compacted together to make the modern dart board.
Up until the 1920s, darts matches tended to be local affairs, played either in-house or between teams from pubs local to each other. During the 1920s, the game became standardised, with the numbers on the dartboard arranged so that they punished those who strayed from the 20 sector. As transport links began to improve, so a National Darts Association was formed, and competitions were organised, the most famous of these being the News of the World Championships. When the News of the World started in 1927-28, it was restricted to what they called the metropolitan area of London. It had an entry of about a thousand people, um, but after the 1930s, when darts became more and more popular, the News of the World expanded the game and gradually introduced different regions. So by the end of the 1930s, it was consisted of some, something like nine or ten different regions, and the number of entrants to those games topped 300,000 people. Darts was used to boost morale during the Second World War and became standard issue in the Naffy Sports Pack. All it took was a board or an appropriate target, some arrows, and the game had new converts in the most unusual places. Perhaps the most important converts were American soldiers who exported the game back to the States. Not surprisingly, it was after the war that the first darts personalities began to emerge, notably Jim Pike and Joe Hitchcock from London, both of whom raised considerable sums of money for charity with their darts exhibitions. This provided a legacy for darts as a charitable fundraiser, and it remains one of the few sports whose players, from the grassroots right up to world levels, consistently raise huge sums for charity. Joe Hitchcock, who plays darts the way we'd all like to, was there with his pal, George Rubber Connell. Their act is a blessing to all landlords and to St Dunstan's. They have collected £20,000 for charity. And this time, Joe gets a bullseye and the sixpence. The art of this William Tell of the games room is sufficient to nail him down a living. When not at a holiday camp, you'll likely find him astounding the regulars in pubs all over the country. For Joe's ability to throw a pretty dart has earned him a job with a leading brewery. To know Joe is to know not to bet your shirt that he's not quite on the button. Give Joe Hitchcock a six-inch nail, and he'll hammer home a whole range of convincing feats. After the Second World War in 1947-48 season, the News of the World Individual Darts Championship started up again, but the most important thing about that was that it was now a national competition. The first winner during that season was Harry Ledbetter, and it was the one darts championship for nearly three and a half decades that everybody still wanted to win. And during the normal course of a year, there would be upwards of 300,000 entrants to the game from pubs and clubs across the nation. Darts was still essentially a game played in pubs, but towards the end of the 1960s, one man saw a greater potential. All darts were played in pubs and clubs then. At nine o'clock, the dart match would start, and everyone in the pub would stop talking and come round and watch the dart match. It came out of my mind, I thought, well, if we could develop this sport into an arena and providing they can see the darts go on the board and see the people, we'll now made it into a spectator sport. We then made contacts with certain different counties who then created a Super League within that county who then the county players would then would re represent their county. This is the one, John, match points, 161. He did the trouble, trouble 17 and... From that beginning emerged the British Darts Organisation, and today there are a number of prestigious tournaments run by the BDO and the World Federation, such as the Winmo World Masters, sponsored by the famous Winmo Dart Company, whose boards are used in all BDO and WDF tournaments. First played in 1974, and most recently won by the former Dutch postman on millionaire Raymond Barneveld, the World Masters provides a championship for men, women, boys and girls. What a performance from the man from the Netherlands. The News of the World Championship vanished for a number of years and made a brief and unsuccessful return in 1997. Over the years, it had been won by nearly all of the darts greats, despite the huge number of entrants and a best of three legs format that was always likely to create upsets. Needs double top for the title. And he has done it! And nobody 
you could argue that this man is a worthy champion. He hasn't lost a leg in these finals. He's gone out in 16, 17, 15, 15, 15. He was a world trophy. He was almost three foot with the stand. Yeah. I mean, it was solid silver. Yeah. Massive, lovely trophy. It was I used to the, sleep it, with it regular in the back of your I, car, I, didn't I? I, I know. They used to put all the rubbish in. You used to have all the sweeties, didn't you? Yep. And all the packets you used to put in the... Crisp in, packets. Crisp packets, um, orange peel. Yep. All the banana skins. Yep. And I remember I used to go home every week and empty it in the dustbin, all the gear. I mean, it was a big trophy. And I remember I was in the back of the car, you leant on it, and you snapped the man off the top. That's right. And then I said, we've got to have it mended, and we was in Birmingham. And we went yep. to the, the jury centre, right. when they've got loads of little shops and sliders on the door. Yep. And I said to this fellow, I knocked on the door, and he said, yeah, he said, I said, can you mend a trophy, this silver trophy? He said, yeah, I can do that. I said, can you do it, you know, while we wait? He said, yeah, and we went in, didn't we? Yeah. And I said, do you think that's the most prestige trophy in the world for darts? I said, I bet you never had one of them in it before. He said, hang a minute. He opens the safe, and he came out. And it came. Had it come, a gold trophy in two pieces, Ryder Cup. Now, what's the answer to that? Odds against two of the biggest tournaments in the sport, in yeah, the world. In the Both world. in the same place, in a little the little back street in Burnham. That's amazing. And that amazing 10-dart finish classed as a new world record in competition darts. I think Leighton Reese is well on the way to another record. That's his fifth point already. Well, Evans the popularity of darts as a television sport stems from one event, the Embassy World Professional Championship. 1978, we managed to get uh, the BBC TV to be involved in cabin darts. The Embassy World Professional Dart Championship was formed. It, that is the start of the, the, the real de the growth and the de development of the sport worldwide. 16 of the world's best players assembled for the inaugural event in Nottingham. And the pick of all the matches was the semi-final between Leighton Rees of Wales and Nicky Varachkul of the USA. Even in those early days, it amply illustrated why the BBC recognised darts as a major televised spectacle of high drama and skill. Locked at seven legs each, Barachkul had the throw in the deciding leg. 60. Double tops. 63. Oh, well, it's nail biting stuff, yeah, Nick. Needing 186 and Reese won an only double 20 to go in the final, and that was very good. Leaves him about 103, but late on this double top. Yes! Waiting for Reese in that first final was the favourite, the ice cool, never blinking methodical John Lowe. The crucial leg in the best of 21 leg final came in the ninth, with the scores level at four legs each. Could be. Oh, what do you... That's what the Welsh are famous for, the flamboyance. Alan Evans, Leighton Rees, the concentration and the attack on the 60. 60. Leighton requires 140. He wants to leave himself double top. 100. Low cannot go out from 181. But he's wanting a really big in here. Big trouble. Oh, brilliant, 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 brilliant. That's the 100 hundredth for John Lowe. Double top. Double ten. Yes! And the man Five four quickly became ten seven, with Reese holding the advantage, needing just one more leg for a famous victory. Pressure on Leighton, low on a finish. The, the tension immense here. What? I can't see. Bull bounced out of the ball. Well, world Championships hang on this. He wants 50. He wants nine. 
and he got the wrong one. That was, he wanted nine double eight. Well, this is it. The point on which the world championship hangs. Leighton Reese won. He could get the full full count still. Ten double tops. Double tops to take the world's major prize. Reese had earned himself a place in darts history as the very first embassy champion. The Welshman collected a cheque for £3,000, enough to buy a decent-sized house in those days. Nineteen seventy nine was a repeat of nineteen seventy eight. Law was the number one seed, and with matches now decided by sets, the more likely to be suited by the best of eleven set final. Each set would be a best of five legs, so in theory the final could have been played over fifty five legs. Double four. Double two. Both players started nervously, but it was Lowe who capitalised on winning the first leg, the where Reese had hit doubles with impunity the year before, now his form deserted him, and he soon found himself four sets and two legs down in the fifth. I feel has to, has to get out here. He's got to hit the ball. No. 56 score. So three darts in his hand, John Lowe of Clay Cross. John, you require 20. Quite savouring the moment. Double 10. Yes! Game shot! The grin and of the champion. The new champion being congratulated by the old. By 1980, darts had become a major televised sport and the cameras and the public loved this different breed of sportsman. There was one player more than any other who did for darts what Alex Higgins was doing for snooker, Eric Bristol, the 24-year-old crafty cockney, whose trademark cockiness and arrogance was loved and loathed in equal measure. In the 1980 final, Bristol faced another of darts' glamour boys, the sequined Bobby George. The new age of darts had arrived, and with it came a passion that few other sports could emulate. Yes! yes! It's not a finish, it's 179. He's coming down for the trouble 19. 59. Just missed. Well, Bobby, you require one forty-one. Bobby's got a chance. There's the three down shot. He's got the 60. Trouble 15. One Lovely shot. 23. Well. I've been this, doing this game for a while. I don't remember this much tension. For the championship, Shanghai on 20s. He's got the 60. 20. Double top. Yes. A whisker out. means double nine and the set to level it up. Bobby, you require four. 18. That's the order, please. Oh, he's awkward one. One. No, and he busts. No that says it all. So here we have championship points. Eric, you require The 40. crafty cockney Eric Bristow rated number one in the world. Order, please, ladies and gentlemen. Needs a single double to become the world champion. Once double ten. Yeah. Eric Bristow from Stoke Newington becomes the 1980 Embassy Professional Champion. Of the Bristow was a precocious talent whose arrogance and seeming lack of respect for any opponent ensured that he became the most public face of darts, if not its most popular. I'm not really worried about Bobby because I beat him in the semi-final of the uh, World Masters. Supporters. <laughs> yeah. You can't resist saying it though, can you? 
That's me, isn't it? Um, I suppose that's why I'm rated number one in the world and he's not. Yeah. <laughs> Still as cocky as ever here, but the word, a genuine word about Bobby George. He played magnificently tonight, and he's really set the darts world alight in this past year. He's, um, he's going to be the number two of the future. Yeah. <laughs> in just three years, the darts world had been transformed. Um, I want him to put his head next to the dartboard, and I want to throw six darts. <laughs> Players whom nobody had heard of were now household names. Exhibition matches flourished, and competitions outside of the tournaments packed the pubs. So far, 21 games undefeated on the run in the Premier Division, Eric Bristow. No one was in greater demand than Eric Bristow. Like all darts players, Bristow had learned his craft in the local pub under the tutelage of his father. At first, he, he really didn't fit into it regarding the team because when we expected him to do the stuff, like finish on a double, we missed. Of course, one or two of the lads had a go at him. Also, I did myself. And after about three months playing for us, he started to find his doubles, except when we played in the cup game. And again, he missed the bloody doubles. First couple of years I played darts, I got ribbed quite a lot because I stuck my finger out. And they were saying, oh, do you drink tea like that? And same old things that you hear time and time again. But as I say, everybody's, everybody's different, and that's what makes the world go round, isn't it? It'd be silly if it was all the same. He was arrogant and big-headed. He was good and always will be good. But uh, one of these days he'll get taken down a peg. 60. He's looking at the 19. Double 16 for the set. He's Only one word. Hello. Magic darts by low. The player who most wanted to take Bristol down a peg or two was the former champion. John Lowe. They met in the first of their three finals in 1981. They were like chalk and cheese. Lowe, cool, calm and calculated, and Bristol full of himself and always dismissive of Lowe. Bristol, a notoriously slow starter, didn't win a leg in the first two sets. Lowe two, Bristol nil. We started off like a train to start with the... He won the first two sets 3 0, 3 0, and I was wasting my time. And I thought, God, what did I come out this morning for? You know what I mean? I should have stayed at home. But um, then after that, I nicked the third set, he miscounted and blew it, and then it gave me a bit of confidence. Can't take nothing away from John. He played brilliant the first couple of sets. And then the class took over. We had the good darts, then we had the class. 2 1 up at the interval, it was Lowe who couldn't win a leg as Bristol whitewashed the next two sets. <laughs> Two -two. Yes! Bristol goes in front! 4 2 to Bristol, but Lowe led in the seventh. Trouble 17. Double 5. 111. John Lee 61. To level. To bring it back to 4 3. 61. Double 18. Yeah! He fought his guts out there. He really fought. It's 4-3. The following set went to the fifth leg. This time, Lowe was on a finish, but Bristol pulled out the big one. Yes! All in one end. Low. Got the 60. It would be amazing if he could pull it out with the next two darts just above the wire. 140! Oh, it's, you, you couldn't believe the tension. Two darts, three darts in his hand, and two could make him the 1981 world champion. Bristow, 60. Double eight for the tournament. Double four. 68 score. I wouldn't believe it. They're standing up, they're jumping, they're rattling the glasses. Double ten for level sets, four four. One left. He wants double four. Yeah! Up he goes like a rocket.
Twelve months later, and John Lowe was back in the final for the third time in four years, where he faced not Bristol, but Scotland's Jockey Wilson. To the delight of many, and most of them players, Bristol had been dumped in the first round by Northern Ireland's Steve Brennan. One dot could give him the World Championship double 16. The following year, Bristol faced only one seed on his way to the final, the eighth seed, Dave Whitcomb. And in the final, he met the unknown qualifier, Keith Della, who was making his first appearance at the embassy. Della had already beaten former champion John Lowe in the quarter final, and then reigning champion Jockey Wilson in the semis. As he had in his two previous finals, Bristol found himself 2-1 down at the interval. But he knows what he's up against. In the fourth, the first two legs went with the darts. Twenties. Trouble 18. Double 16. 74. That gives Della the opportunity. Double top. Yes, he's got it. Bristol won the next leg to make it 2-2 and then had the honour for the fifth and final leg. the world number one under pressure 81 left 62 in needs 109 key to require 36 that's double 18 for the fourth set double nine yes he's done it as well and the fourth set bristol came back to win the next set making it 3-2 and the sixth came down to a deciding leg. He will try to leave double 16. He will try for trouble 17 first out. 66 left. Is it 25? And nine to leave that double 16. Maybe the pressure getting through to Della, because now Bristol poised on double 16 to make it all square in sets. Game shot and the sixth set. To Once Eric again, Bristol. not to Della, that was to the crowd. But where most would have expected Della to be blitzed by the Bristol juggernaut, Della himself refused to buckle. Eric, you require 18. Knowing that he has to get this finish. Double ten. Double five. Seventy-five. In trouble. Keith requires sixty-four. Trouble sixteen. Is it a? He wants sixteen for double top now. Double top. Forty-four. Oh, unfortunate. Eric requires five. Still not the easiest of finishes. One for double two is the shot. Double two. Double one. No score. Keith to require 20. Right in the nose. Same order, please. Looking at Della. He's looking at double ten. He's got Yay! it! 4 3 to Della soon became 5 3. The ninth came down once again to the deciding leg. Della needed it for the championship and with three darts to throw, trailed by just 24. Tons. Yeah. 137! Now the fun is on the boil of Jollies. Bristow wanted 177 when he towed the hockey. 60! 64! He's required! 
64. For the wonder boy to be champion of the world. Single 16. Double 16 for the title. Oh. Rob Fed. 46. That was a crucial trouble. 93. Double nine Patriot for the world AC. title. One. Double four for the title. Full scores. Eric to make it a dark match. Double 12. Nearer by the eighth of an inch. Twelve score. It requires four for the title. Double two. Two score. There's tension. There's tears. Double six. Everybody's getting the jitters now. Yes, that's the ninth set to F. Christo. They both laughing. Della had blown six chances to win the title, and Bristol quickly took the tenth set. Bristol rocking and rolling. Going into the eleventh deciding set. Bristol was now on a roll. Double 18 for Della. Double four, check. 57. <laughs> Eric requires 36. Della pulls the dart with Venom. Bristol wants double 18. Yes, that's the first leg to Eric Bristol. Della had lost the last five legs and Bristol looked set to regain his crown. He requires 121. Double eight for Della. Yes, that's the second leg to Keith Della. I don't quite believe this, but those that obviously do. The crowd emoting. 140. Six crucial darts to take Della once again to the brink of victory. Double 16 for Della. Yes! Yes! That's the third leg to Keith Della! Get this leg, Bristol. Bullseye. Play the percentage shot. 89. Looking dangerous, Bristol. He's banking on Della not doing this. Put the shots on for the title. Double 12 for the title. Switch, 23 year old, he had a qualify to get here. Bristol did a percentage shot. Della did the business. He's now the world champion. When I went five feet up against Eric, I thought then I only want one more. And going for that double, I just went really went not very near it. That double two? Double Very two was the one, and when I missed it and Eric took the set, and then he came back brilliant, I thought I was in a little bit of trouble. Eric, John Lowe was sitting here during the match and he said he really reckoned that Keith was managing to control the match right the way through, certainly the first five and six sets. Well, it's easy to sit back and watch it and say what you think. Um, uh, obviously, he went 2-0 up, then I went 2-1, then he went 3-1 three three one up one. against the throw again. I come back to 3-2, then he went 3-0, then, then I was back in the game, then he went 4-3, three, 
5-3, and it should have been 6-3. He had the dots yes. to do it, and I thought his bottle has gone. He's, he's panicking. <laughs> and then it went 5-4, five, 5-all. Five, that Deller 138 instantly went into the annals of darts history, and many predicted that Eric's miscalculation would finish him. Now, Eric really and truly was unprofessional, if you think back. Going for the ball. At the time, he said, well, I didn't think he'd get 138. Well, it's, you, should, you can't ever do that in darts. If there's a shot left, we know you've got either... If you've got one dart, 50. You've got to go for that bullseye. That's right. If you've got a dart and you want 50, you go for it. If you've got... With one dart in your hand? Yes. If you've got three? Oh, no, I different don't think matter, so. different But matter, in that position, matter. he should have definitely yeah. went for bullseye yeah. with one dart. But if Eric had the choice another 100 times, Eric would go for the ball. I asked Eric that, and he said, well, I didn't think he'd get it. Now, how can he say that? The boy, I mean, the boy played so many good darts that, that year. I mean, he didn't just walk to the final, Keith Teller. Whether they say, oh, Keith, he's never done much since, but Keith played terrific darts that year to win the embassy. 23-year-old Della had thrown the greatest set of darts in embassy history and given the sport a Cinderella story that was crucial to its impetus. Della never came close to the title again. Indeed, he never made it past the quarters, and just five years later made his last embassy appearance, losing in the first round. <laughs> Bristow, on the other hand, proved the doubters wrong, and in 1984 was as dominant as ever. He dropped just one set in the championship, and that came in the final when he demolished Dave Whitcomb 7-1. Are you disappointed to have dropped a set in the championship? Because if you could have gone through this one clean as well, it would have been a remarkable record. No, I think it's a record anyway, isn't it? Losing one set all the way through the... the the toughest start tournament in the world. I'm just glad I won it. I, I wouldn't have minded if I'd have won 2-1, 3-2, 4-3, 5-4, 6-5, all the way through. How important has it been <coughs> to you, Eric, to win this trophy for the third time? Well, it's important to me. It wouldn't have made no difference um, for me well ranking points. I was still number one anyway, but that was uh, important to me. Um, Keith took it off me last year. <laughs> I didn't like it very much, uh, but he, he played brilliant last year. The outcome was decided in the fifth set when Whitcomb trailed 3-1, but had a chance to get back into the match. He knows he's got to get it to get back in the game, see? I thought he'd get it anyway. I was just standing over, picking me beer up as he was just having a sip. You thought this one had gone, did you? Yeah. That's it, and he knew it then. He, he's smiling to me, and I'm trying to sight myself. You're almost but... growling as you're coming up to the hockey there. I'm just saying to myself, come on, come on. And, uh, well, look at this, look. Look at the state of this, look. That was, uh, that was an unlucky dog. That wasn't too bad. This was a... Uh, thank you, God. <laughs> and that was it then. I knew then I'd won it then. The Embassy World Professional Final 1985 for a first prize of £10,000. The following year, Bristol beat Whitcomb in the semis and then faced his old adversary, John Lowe, in the final. Bristol started the fifth leg of the sixth set, leading 3-2, and with a maximum to start, had the opportunity to win the £52,000 on offer for a nine dart 501. Yes. Yes. It's there. The nine dart shot is on for Eric Bristow. Six treble twenties on the trot. And low smiles. 45. He'll be willing him on. Everybody's on Thank his you. side. Good luck, Eric. Yes. Trouble 19. Oh, dear. 78. A loose start. Could have been worth £52,000. Thank you very much. One hundred, Eric Uruguay, sixty-three. But one that means just as much to him this set. Forty-six, fourteen, double sixteen. Yes, yes, it's there. The next set also went to a fifth leg. Treble ten, double sixteen. Twenty now for double sixteen. Double sixteen. It's there. And the seventh set. The eighth set was just as tight. Again, it was locked at two legs apiece. Bristow leaves, double 16. Thank you. Usually seen in every pub, picked off easily. As low. 
140. Almost like an athlete coming into the stadium, a lap behind. As Bristow looks at one dot for the match, double 16. Once again, Lowe had to be content with being the bridesmaid as Bristol swept him aside 6-2 for victory number four. Della had denied Bristol the chance of winning three successive embassy titles with that historic win in 1983, and Bristol was determined to make embassy history in 1986. That was the year the embassy moved from Jollies and Stoke-on-Trent to the Lakeside Country Club in Frimley Green. The venue may have changed, but the result was the same. Where Bristow had allowed Whitcomb one set two years previously, this time he made no mistake. Yes, it's there! Bristow had become the first and only player to win three embassy titles in succession, five in total. No one else had won it more than once. He was Mr. Darts, and he enjoyed a supremacy over his rivals in the same way that Steve Davis was doing in the snooker world. Bristol was so dominant that it was hard to imagine that his star was about to wane. The player who had suffered most at the hands of Bristol was John Lowe. He'd lost all three of their embassy encounters. In 1987, they met again in the final. Remarkably, this was Lowe's sixth final. He'd won only once compared to Bristol's seven finals with five wins. So dominant were these two players that only five other players had ever made it to an embassy final in the 10 years of its existence. Bristol led 2-0 and then by three sets to two. That advantage was held over the next two sets, but Lowe was about to embark on a role that was seen by many as the turning point in Bristol's air of invincibility. John, you require 25. For four sets to four, nine and double eight. Double four. Game set on the eighth set. Both players had their chances in the crucial ninth set. And as it came down to the wire, Bristol held the upper hand. Absolute exquisite match. They are pounding back at each other. Second for second. 180! One hundred and forty. Blister and darts, both to a finish. Bad miss. Forty. John, you require one hundred and twenty-one. Great chance below then to go ahead. Five sets to four. Bullseye. The crowd gasp. 79. Eric, you require 83. Yeah, double 16. One more dart. 67. Missed. John, you require 42. The giant jumping. A great chance below to go five sets to four up. Is the 10. Double 16. Bristow was now suffering for his complacency when 2 0 up in the match, and Lowe knew that he'd never have a better chance to regain the title he had held eight years previously. 140! But pressurised, he needs this. Eric, you require 118. Thinking it out. He can't finish, 113 left. They're all ready. 105. Treble 15. Double top. 70 left. Relief for Bristol. Eric requires 76. Can he do it? Treble 20, double eight. Double eight. Double four. Oh, he 
finished. That could be it. The standing, the John jumping. Lee, player 40. For double top. Double 10. Game shot. The 1987 Embassy World Professional Champion. When I was two sets down, I thought, crikey, John, where do you dig for the darts? Are they in the bottom of your toes or where do you get them from? And uh, I think really, uh, without being too distortful, I think Eric got a bit too complacent and uh, let me in, really. He, he left a 170 on one leg, which I thought, that's great. And then that le really let me in. I won that leg and that won me the match. Do you think that final's answered a few questions about John Lowe? Because if there has been a criticism in the past, it's been that when you are down, that, that maybe you, you get a little bit easier to beat and you get a bit disheartened. I've been every world professional championship. I was in the very first one. I'm in the one today. How can he answer any questions more than that? Six times in the final, twice I've won it. Does that answer the question? There was a new generation of players making the mark, among them the world number one, Bob Anderson. Prior to 1988, Anderson had never progressed beyond the quarters and four attempts. This time, he had much the best of the draw, beating four unknowns on his way to playing John Lowe, who had beaten Bristol 5-2 in the semis. Ball for the set for 4-4. Four, four. Anderson took an early lead and still held the advantage going into the eighth set. But when Lowe took the eighth, his experience seemed likely to prevail. But Anderson was in the best form of his life, and he was determined to succeed in what would be his one and only appearance in the Embassy final. Let's go 5 4, Bob's looking at treble 10, and now double 16. Double 8. Yes, that's the right set! The hands of Anderson weaving a bit of a fairy tale up there. This to save the match. Needed that 60 with the first dart. To become world champ, Bob wants double 16 on the wire. The limestone cowboy, the number one seed, is now the 1988 world champion. But what a match John Lowe put up. The following year, a revitalised jockey Wilson accounted for Anderson in the semis. And Bristol celebrated becoming the first and only darts player to receive the MBE with a crushing 5-1 defeat of Lowe at the same stage. And the match to Eric Bristol. Yes, vintage Bristol. Well, we saw vintage Wilson. We have the final. What a final in prospect. The cocky arrogance of Bristol against the explosive unpredictability of Wilson. It had all the makings of a classic. The ever-popular Wilson was in his first final since winning the title back in 1982. Bristol, while still one of the greats, was no longer the irresistible force of the mid-80s. To save this set... Indeed, Bristol's fallibility was evident from the start. Bullseye. 96! <laughs> Jockey requires 20. The first set, double ten. Yes, that's the first Well, set. as the Bristol fans hang their heads, set. Jockey takes first blood. 1 0 soon became 5 0, with the very real prospect of Bristol double being set. whitewashed. Yes. The crafty Cockney, though, pulled one back. But Wilson had yet another chance for the title when there were two legs apiece in the seventh set. This for the match, the champion. Ball leaves double 16. Went for trouble 14, he's missed it. Right on the wire. 94. Eric can require 54. That's the score that we've got, 54. Will it be 14? Double top. Yes! Eric Bristol! You better believe it, he said.
Out of the cupboard again comes the skeleton. And by the skin of his teeth, Bristol still... 5-1 became 5-2. And 2-1 to Bristol in the eighth. Single 16. Double top for 2-2. He's missed! Six, six, six. They can't believe it. They can't. We can guarantee... Eric in require. 56. Bristol can. Thank Which you. way? 16 double top. Double top. Yes! yes! Well, he gives us all a kiss. He's back. It's 5-3. They're enjoying it. The ninth set lived up to all the pre-match hype as Bristol showed nerve and resolve as he tried desperately to stay in the match. Double eight, double four. One dot left, a double four. And it's gone! Jumping required, 48. He won 16. No, he's gone the other way, tops. He pulled it, double 10. 38. And it can require eight. Thank you. A flash storm. Of excitement here. Congress took it further back with double four. He wants double two. Yes! So it looks better for him now. Eric require 121. Or else Jockey could be a leg away from the title. It's a hard shot now. Just missed the triple ID. 89. Double 12. To Jockey get within required 24. One leg of the title. Oh, he's snatched badly. Double six. Yes, and the fourth man. He's been patchy at times in this match on his doubles, Eric. He's got the advantage of throwing first here, so he should be at the double first. Trouble 19. 177. This is amazing, Darts. Bristow showing fantastic current out there. 100. But he'll be wanting to kill out here to take it a 5 4. 92. And even double 16. Side jump and okay. Bristow wants double 16 for 5 4. <laughs> Giving his fans heart attacks. 16 is gone. It's the wrong bed. Johnny require 104. For the world title. Can do with a three. Brilliant, that's what he wanted. 18 probably. Double 18. 68 score. I think he miscounted. He did. Oh, what drama. He could have won the world title there. Thank you. Double eight for 5 4. Yes, well, absolutely amazing. Jockey took the wrong double when he could have took the title. Jockey may have miscalculated, but it didn't seem to affect him in the 10th when he took a two legs to one advantage. Ooh, double five. Showing the excitement. The first 15 darts of the fourth leg produced only one treble 20. And then Jockey looked to have taken a decisive advantage. So we could see Jockey going for the title soon. 140! Plus from Bristow here would uh, really tickle things up. Eighty-four. Jumping require one hundred and fifty-six. 
for the world title. The shot is on. It's another 60. Oh, he's taking his time. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He wants double 18. 120! Eric Aguilar, 130! To save the match. Thank you. To save a cracking match. He wants 60 in the bull. He's got to get the bull. And he's got it! Whoa! And still the spirit sensational! Sportsmanship, even with all his tension, prestige, and cash at stake. This would be the fourth time Jockey needed just one leg for victory, and he had the darts. However, Jockey was throwing an increasing number of trademark snatch shots. Where are the nerves getting to him? Could he resist the Bristol comeback? The old snatch is working now, that, that spinning drive of the dart. Forty-one. Jockey in the crowd, 161. For the world title, treble 17 and bull. Just missed. 97. Bristow, no finish. So Jockey could go out with two and take the cup. Sixty. Jockey requires sixty-four. Treble sixteen he wants. He wants single sixteen. He wants tops for the title. Forty-four score. Thank you. This in the 60, I think he's had it. 100! Jockey required 20! Double 10 to take the title. Double 10. Yes! yes! Jockey Wilson does it! I think, personally, for Portal, Jockey Wilson didn't even... No, no nerves with Jockey. Jockey could be 5-0 down and play exactly like he was 5-0 up. Yep. He didn't know. How many times did he do it and come back and win again? And not I've seen him win championships at the embassy, and he doesn't even know he's won. And Eric used to have a lot of uh, challenges against Jockey, as That's you right. know, in them dates. They used to go around the country playing each other. Mm -hmm. And Eric said, you can't beat him. He doesn't even know when he's winning. Yeah. So he's, he ain't going to know when he's losing. But the one thing about Jockey all sticks in my mind. When he was on song, he could hit that double top blindfold. Yeah. But it, it was incredible. <laughs> you know, you knew it was going in. You were ready to call game shot. He, he just knew. By 1990, a new era was being ushered into darts as prize money began to increase. The 1990 winner would take home £24,000, eight times the amount Leighton Reese had won in 1978. And there was an even bigger pot available, the magic £52,000 for a nine-dart 501. One hundred and eighty! Yes, this is second. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's there again! 141 points away from 52,000 points. Will you require 141? Everybody cheering him on, hoping, and so is he. <clears throat> yes. Yes! Double 12! Yes! yes! It's the pain! Can you believe it? Everybody standing! It's happened at last! Here in the World Championship! Poland! John Lowe had won even more for a nine data. In 1984, he had won £100,000 for achieving the feat in the MFI World Match Play. So now low with the darts in the second leg. 180! The maximum with the first three darts.
Wow. He can indeed. Looks like he's coming for three seventeens. Yes. Treble 18, his next target. Yes, he wants two 18s for £100,000. Pity Sean great back in the 2002 Dutch Open. There was no special prize on offer for what was the first live nine data on television. Great bitch. Yeah. Weer een lot achter. Sean Grégoire, 141. Triple 20 gegooid. Triple 15. Ja. Dubbel 18 voor een 9 darter. Ja! Hij gooit hem! Sean Grégoire! En alleen. Ja, dan kun je Koos tot mee uitschakelen. De 1990 Embassy Final again featured Eric Bristow. Although he had been beaten in his last two finals, he was still the hot favourite to take his sixth title against a player ranked 18th in the world, Phil Taylor. Taylor, a protégé of Bristol's, didn't have the best of starts. Twenty-five. Taylor recovered from such an inauspicious start to lead the first set 2-1 in legs. With his opponent on a three down possible, we're still on 68, 16 and double. Once the double 16. 36. <laughs> Phil, you require 170. It would make this audience go crackers if he could. This is a shot Everson's done this week, a 170. The shot's on, he wants another 60. He wants the bull for the set. If Bristol was unsettled by the 170 checkout, he didn't show it as he swept through the next set to square the match. Double 16. Yeah! There's the but Taylor then showed the power for which he was to become famous and stormed into a 4 1 lead at the interval. Back in the hockey after the break, Bristol was behind but had the throw. Not to be. Double 19 for the set. Three, double eight. Double eight, six set. Yes, that's the six set. But he's still in there. He'll fight. Yes, still smiling. Seven one eight is for Bristol. But back comes Taylor. Oh, yes. He turns round to the crowd. Eight for him. They're loving it. But will this be it? Look at this. This is what this game's all about. <laughs> well, I don't think I want to say what he's saying there. No, you wouldn't think this was the final. £12,000 the difference as well. 18s for Bristow. Double 16. Double 8. Is missed. The story of the match. Four requires 49. Will it be 17 or 9? We'll see. Double top. top. Yes, for the title. Double 10. Taylor was a complete outsider, and at least one person in the Bristol camp was happy with the result. My driver's at a £10, 125 to 1. That's my driver. He's sacked, He's sacked. He's gone. <laughs> Trevor's out the window. No, that's before it started, because Trevor and yeah. Phil yeah. get on well anyway. We've been friends for yeah. a few years.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 1991 Embassy World Professional Dance Championship. Teller returned to the Lakeside in 1991 as the number one seed, but was beaten by Dennis the Menace Priestley 4-3 in the quarters. Priestley then accounted for another former champion, Bob Anderson, in the semis. Bristol, seeded three, was in his 10th embassy final. Since his first in 1980, he'd missed out on only two. This, though, was to be his last. Indeed, Bristol appeared in only two more embassies before the split which was to rock the darts world. 12, double 16. Two in his hand, one needed, double 16. Double eight. Jenny going do it, it requires to get the Bristow Roadshow back on track. Who wants tops? Wrong bed, double 15. Nobody likes it. 18 score. You rarely see anybody going for double 15. Dennis requires 18. To make the scoreline look a bit like a massacre, he's going for. 60 for double 10, yes. It's two darts for four sets to nil, Priestley. Once double 10. Yeah, the fourth set. Dennis requires 117. Well, that would take us into the interval, and it would be five sets to nil in his favor if Priestley can do this. It's a three dart shot. The shot is definitely on now. He's looking at 17 for tops. To make it five sets to nil, unbelievable. He wants tops. Sadly, Priestley swamped Bristow in that 1991 final, winning by six sets to nil. It meant that in his last two finals, the once dominant Bristow, the first high profile player to suffer from dartitis, had won only one set against the new breed of players emerging. Everyone wanted to see Eric go, mm -hmm. because no one likes a winner all the time. And we thought, you know, one day he's gonna go, and then when it did go, he went quick. But then he had a different breed of players come up. It was Priestley, very, very slow. He was precise. Now, if you're a slow player and you can hit what you're aiming for, you slow your opponent up, it's very difficult to play a guy like that. Well, oh, Eric had diatis as he's went. They get the dart and it's just stuck to their head. I don't know what they do, they cannot let go of that dart. In fact, I've seen guys fall over. Oh, still pushing the dart and falling over. Well, Eric had to get over that. And there's another thing they say, that dart is, is something to do with your nervous system. So Eric's won it, he's struggling a bit with dart is, but his nerves don't let him play as he normally plays. And he gets to the final and he did struggle with it. I've got a similar thing, it's called money -itis. It's oh, like every time you're I- You're telling me? Yeah, every time I want a beer, I can't get me in my pocket, I keep going like that. But <laughs> But it's a, it is, you've got to give the boy credit. I mean, mm -hmm. 10 years at the top, um, five finals, five times runner-up. I mean, it's great, yes, you, you know, he's definitely the bee's knees. Yeah. I'm telling him the other week, he wants to know, are you still keeping them white fivers? <laughs> <laughs> Second leg, fell to throw The 1992 Embassy final was to be a watershed. It was the first final not to feature either Eric Bristol or John Lowe. And if recent finals had been rather one-sided, the 1992 final was to eclipse anything that had gone before. The 1992 Embassy World Darts Championship featured Phil Taylor, the number one seed who had squeezed past John Lowe 5-4 in the semis, against the number two seed, Mike Gregory. At 4-4, Gregory led by a single leg. Priestley scored 25 one hundred and eighties last year. Treble 19. Ball for a 167. Surely he'll go for the ball. A 167, Phil Taylor. Mike requires 101. Oh, Mike's double top, so treble 21, double top. Double top. 61. Phil requires 120. Double top. 100. Mike requires 40. Double top. Yeah. Lead 
to Gregory by one leg. Fell requires 61. Double 18. Double 9. 43. Might requires 40. Because this for the set. Double 10. Fell requires 18. Double 9 for 2-2. Two, two. One double four. Double four. Four teams go. Gregory comes back. Mike requires 20. For the lead then, double ten. Yes! Mike Gregory. Mike requires 161. I need to tell you, it's treble 20. Treble 17. Ball. Yes! yes! Taylor on the rocks. A 1 6 1 out shot for Gregory. But it's not Gregory. over yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. An advantage Taylor must keep. Was favourite. 45. What if this man, Mike Gregory, can take this leg? Becomes the Embassy World Champion for 1992. 140! Already with a chance. He's stuck at his guns as Gregory threw out. Oh, yes! What an answer! 25 180s in the championship, but... Never one as important as that. Sixteen. I'm having a good leg here to take us all the way. One hundred ninety six points away from the eleventh set, Taylor. Gregory on a finish for Phil Taylor. Treble 20, double 18. Double 18 for the set. Yes! Set. What a final. It's 5-5. Five, five. We're going all the way. 11th and final set. Thank you. Double 10 for 2-0. Double 5. There's nerves there, you can guarantee. No score. Phil requires 16. Double eight. No oh, score. another miss. Mike requires 20. Well, that's how you're doing, Mike. Double 10. Game shot at the second end. Taylor trails 2 0. At least six starts for the finish. Trouble 17 would leave the ball. That leaves him 84. 137. And double 12. And we'll finish there. 2 3 5. Tiebreaker time. Yes, yes, it's there. It's 2 2 final set. The 11th and final set must be won by two clear legs. Mike requires 101. And his first chance to the number two seed. Treble 10. 65. Double 18 left. Fell requires 102. Is it this out shot in this match? Treble 20. Ball. 
for double 16. Not to be. 81 left, so treble 19. 40. Mike requires 36. Yeah. Just think of Mike the pressure. 161. On this shot. Treble 20. 100. 61 points away from victory. 110. Fighting to save the match. 50 left. 18 leaves double 16. No, he's gone for 10 double top. Double top. That could be it. Mike requires 61. For the title, 25 would leave double 18. Treble 15 leaves double eight. Double eight, two darts. One to go. 53 oh, scores. Oh dear, he's let it slip in by, yes. Phil Taylor, still there. Double 10. Double five. Not the best double on the board, you can believe me. Pats himself on the head. Mike requires 121. There's at least six darts for it. 61 left, 25, double 18. No, he's gone treble 11, double 14. Yes, and he's got it. Well, he goes in front, 4-3 once again. 99 left, but he's going all the way. Yes, it's there. To leave 39. Still all happening. This is an outshot. Needed the treble. 60. Fed requires 39. Seven. Double 16. He saves the match once again. 4-4. Four, four. At least another two legs to go. 82 Taylor. Thank you. Bull would leave double 16. Well, that's 15. So 17. Bull with the last start. 57. Opening for Gregory now. Treble 10. Prefers double 18. Double 18 for the lead. Yes, there they go. It's 5 4 to Gregory. Well, 98 left. May go for 18s. 138. No out shot for Taylor. Needs to punish the treble 20 to put pressure on that 80 finish. One of them. Coming down. 99. Mike requires 18. Treble 20, double 10. Single 20, double top. For the title. Double top. Oh, another chance gone. Then requires 116. Under this pressure, treble 20. Still a chance. Treble 20, double 18. He can't finish. You can hear the rumbles there of the audience. Mike requires 14. Three darts for Thank the you. title. Double top, Mike Gregory. Double ten. One to go. He's missed! He had it! It was his! Taylor requires 16. This is amazing. Taylor. Double eight. Yes! Well, we can only go one more leg. Mike Gregory. He had it. He knows. The 11th and final leg, sudden death, Phil to throw first. For the ball. It's outside the 25. Oh, right. So important, the first throw. Ball down, Mike Gregory to throw first. Could that win the title? Thank you. This is the 53rd leg of this final. It's Gregory, and it is underway. 
He's had opportunities. Silence. One hundred and forty. Sixty points ahead with the first throw. One last effort from both players. Nineteens. One hundred and thirty-seven. Remarkable. Look at that concentration. One hundred and two. One hundred and forties. This is the one. Pulled it. Recovers. Yeah. 125. And recovers well. Taylor, 96. Two darts for the title. Nine teams. 83. Fair requires 96. He's thrown nine darts. Trouble 20, double 18 would give him the champion. Trouble 20. He cannot finish. 16 for double 56. top. Chance for Gregory. Mike requires 104. Can he do it? 18s maybe. No, 20, 84 left, so treble 20, double 12. He can't finish. 60. Bell requires 40. Double top. Well, look at him there. Standing, cheering. Gregory had the chance, but there you have it. Look at him out there. What a final, the finest final we've ever had. There is the champion. Well, I said all week I'd be missing doubles. All I wanted was a shot. Phil gave me two. I can't complain at that. I missed. He took the title. Yeah. Mr Taylor, it'll be nice to get this back in the mantelpiece. You probably still have a space for it. That's going on top of my television, that is. All the ornaments and the hours are going out the window. That's going right on top of my television. With pride. Oh, if, you can't explain what it means to me. Really and truly, you can't. It was a match of many ifs and buts, perhaps the biggest of all, Gregory's third dart in that final leg. Had it gone in instead of hitting the wire, he would have had a 140, and the outcome might just have been different. Three darts for the title. Nevertheless, six times he had a dart to win. Double ten. How many times must Taylor have thought it was all over? And yet he showed the nerve and courage of a true champion. In the 20 legs played since they were four all in sets, Taylor had never been ahead until he won the title. On seven occasions, he had to win the leg to stay in the match. I did feel sorry for Gregory. Did he say anything to you after the match? No? Yeah, the presentation, as you know, there's a set procedure on stage. They have to come and stand either side of me. And I just turned to Mike and said, unlucky, mate. And he said, it just wasn't written for me today, Mark. I mean, Phil had even put his darts away at once, actually. We all thought, if you look at the video, you think Gregory's going to win this if he didn't know the result. That's right. And he's going to win it again. He's going to win it. And all of a sudden, he don't win it. And it's... Uh, and it's, it's great it, it, proof to tell the youngsters that the game isn't all over until you hit that double. The game's never over until the fat that man match, says, says so. game, shot, right. and match. Yeah. 1993 was a championship of upsets. None of the top four seeds made it to the semis, but an old favourite came back to the lakeside after an absence of five years. Feeding I love in the embassy is to walk on that stage. Yeah. And there's nothing in the world like when you get on that stage, you tingle all over. If you're gonna do something, you gotta if you ain't no good, Martin, as you know, you've got to look the part. You've got to look the part. You've got to look the yeah. part. You so, saw a singer, that's what started it. Singing, wasn't I, it? I see a singer in uh, Spain and he had a, he had a cat suit on and he was all yellow and he had all sequins up and he was doing Elvis. But he couldn't do Elvis very good. And I said to these ladies, I said, Can he bed? 
terrible. He obviously does. She said, yeah, but doesn't he look good? He looks the part. So I thought, well, I'm going in the embassy. I better look the part. Because right. I had the glitter. They thought I was like a Liberace. And I come off the stage and they give me this great big care, all lit up. And that, Bobby Jules was born. Bobby George reached the 1993 semi-finals, but was beaten 5-3 by John Lowe, making his eighth final in 16 years. Alan Warrener, the fifth seed, had coasted into the final for the loss of just four sets, but that's the number of sets he was down, as the two squared up at two legs all in the sixth. 63 for the set. Fab leaves double four. Double four for a lead of 5-1 in sets. Double four. Yes! Brain shot! Having reached a point of no return, Warner relaxed and started to find his doubles. Set. Double eight. Yes, where is King Warner? And he required 40. Double top. Yes! Yes, game shot. Sensing victory out there. 26. But it was only a matter of time before Old Stoneface completed a remarkable embassy career with his third title. It was a unique record for Lowe winning embassies in each of the three decades in which it had been played. Yes! It's there! Relief, John Lowe. Lowe didn't return to defend his title in 1994, nor did several other former champions, such as Dennis Priestley, Phil Taylor, Bob Anderson, Jockey Wilson and Eric Bristow. All had defected to the World Darts Council, later to become the PDC. Whilst many familiar faces were missing from the 1994 championship, one huge favourite was still packing in the crowds, Bobby George. Once again, he made it to the semis, where he faced another unseeded player, Sweden's Magnus Karras. George was suffering for his over-exuberance in his previous match. I've got the third set, I jumped up in the air. I come down, I come down wrong. And me back, come out of line and I'd done two discs, I'm gone. I had to find the chiropractor, and I played in this, he made me a corset. The spender belt's got in the way a bit, but the corset fitted perfect. <laughs> no sequins on it, mind you. We tried to get one with sequins on it. Bobby, you require 36. Double 18. Yes, it's there. If George was inconvenienced by his steel corset, then it certainly didn't show as he raced through the first two sets. Now at double top for the set. Yes! That's the second set! Karras took the next two, and by now George was definitely hobbling, having real problems with the excruciating pain from his lower spine. Double 18 for a 1 2 9 outshot, and the set. That's what darts is about. Nineteens for Bobby. Treble, single, bull. Bull. One dart. Oh, oh once again, oh. a fraction. So unlucky. Magnus, you require 40. For the sixth set, a lead of 4-2. It's double top. Yes. yes. The Swede is boiling without a doubt, he's 4-2 up now. Karras had won the last four sets and looked unstoppable in the seventh, leading by two legs to nil. Trouble 15. Double 18 for the final. Oh, it was nearly there. What is happened? The first smile from Magnus. Bobby, you require 48. To save it, 16. Double 16. Yeah. Oh, it still That's carries the on. There he goes. Magnus, you require 131. Another chance for the match for Magnus. Can't finish now. 111 left. 16, 19s. 99. Oh, you require 41. 
single nine two darts left double 16. one to go he's done yeah. it he's done it marie's up she's up and swinging bobby's there to take us all the way single nine double 16. one left it's there oh look at marie look at bobby look at magnus we're going all the way 4-4 what a fight back looked out of the match it's 4-4 this is sheer guts and determination. Double top. One dart left. Oh, 20. just a fraction. Magnus back. Magnus, you require 59. Single 19. Double top. Double 10. Oh, it's Magnus hitting everything in the early sets. Marie shouting on Bobby. You require 20. Double 10, moving in. Yes, yes, it's there, it's 2 0. Incredibly, Keras had lost the last eight legs, and it was Bobby George battling against the odds who now stood on the brink of victory. A better one now. 25. This is magic. 66 points away from victory. After looking down and out. 113 left, Magnus. 100! Stand for the place oh, erupting. Yeah. Look at the nerves, 66. look at the tension. Out there and on here. Treble 10. Single 16. One dart, double top. Silence. Magnus, oh, when I played him, I was 4 2 down, two, two legs down. He's got 141. I'm looking behind him, 60. I thought, uh uh, 45. I thought, this is the time I want me mummy, because mm -hmm. I'm going home. I thought, is he going to hit it? Double 18 for the final. His bottle just went for one dart. He thought about it. He thought, if I hit this, I'm in the final. And we all do that. It's not just the bottle, it's in your head. You think, if I hit this, I'm there. And really and true, you shouldn't miss. Not when he's got the flow. Once you get the flow, 60, 45, you normally get it. Mm. He missed. I thought, well, I've got now my book, because I had to hit that shot out. And I did. And it was fortunate enough for me to, to win nine legs on the trot and get to the final. Well, there spells it. 40 shots at the finish, hit five. John Park, 36, hit 15. That has been the story of the final. Sadly for Bobby, there was a price to pay. In the final against the Canadian John Part, he was clearly in difficulty, as Part relentlessly set about becoming the embassy's first overseas winner. Incredibly, George went to check out 49 times and succeeded on just five occasions. No. Pain, agony, he can't believe it. The cool man from Canada moves in another chance for the title on double five one oh double one he can't finish he can't believe it look at Marie oh boy still a chance Bobby still entertaining double one No, is that the end of the entertainment? She manages a smile. It's had everything this championship. This is double five. Only one left. But that's it. That is it. Perhaps Bobby should never have played in that final. A few weeks later, he had major surgery to insert eight titanium screws into the base of his spine. But it was his finest embassy year and established him as one of the all-time embassy heroes. 
Although some of the faces for the 95 embassy may have been unfamiliar to some viewers, the tournament was as popular as ever and maintained the embassy's unique affinity between player and fan. Embassy debutants made it to the semi finals. Richie Burnett, the Prince of Wales, and Andy Fordham, the Viking. From the final, double 16. Double 8. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Shot on the mark. Ring you require 16. Double 8. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a Dutchman Ray Barneveld was in his third world championship. He'd often qualified, but had never previously gone beyond the second round. Burnett always held the upper hand in their final, and led by a set going into the decisive leg of the eighth. Two, double eight, one, three, six. 128! Would have taken the set. Please, come on, he's saying. Two treble twenties, double top. One of them. Oh, look at that, just a fraction. Just a fraction. 95. Yes, for 5 3, and one set away. Double 4 it is. Oh, it quits. Ring requires 65. Taking his time. 25 would leave double top. Yes, two darts, double top. Oh, no, he pulled it, he pulled it. Double four, back to Burnett. Yeah, it gives him a two-set cushion at 5-3, Richard Burnett, the Prince of Wales. The ninth set followed a similar pattern to the eighth, but this time Burnett had the advantage of the darts in the final leg. Two treble twenties, double eight. One hundred! Double eighteen left, no outshot Raymond Barneyvold. We could be looking at the new world champion. One hundred forty! <laughs> Ricky, you require thirty-six. Double eighteen. Look at him standing. Look at him. As the number one seed, Burnett was just as dominant getting to the 1996 final, where he faced sixth seed and housewives' favourite, Steve Beaton. You require Seen some big out shots. Trouble 20. 14. Bull. Oh, hit the wire. 74. Burnett looks away. Richie, you require. 40. Richie looks at double top. Bent the wire. 
Yes, yeah. quality team. That's a six set. Reggie Burnett. Well, a great set for the world. When Burnett levelled the final at three sets all, a repeat of his 1995 victory seemed inevitable. But it was Beaton who took command by going ahead 5 3, needing just two legs for the championship. Steve, you require 30. Double 15. Yes, applause all week for being. Steve, you require 89. The Embassy World, professional champion, 1996. Bull. Oh, what a way it would have been to go out. No out shot. Single nine, two darts, double eight. This is when nerves take over. Nine score. I can guarantee you it's not easy. Richie, you require 72. Trouble 12. No, he's gone for 20, so double six. Keeps him in there. One to go. Oh, on the wire. 60. Do you require 16? The title in his hands, double eight. Yes, Game. it's all over. It's there. Because of the dominance of Bristol and Lowe, the 1980s had produced just five different champions. Already in the 1990s, there had been six. And a seventh different champion was guaranteed in 1997, as the best left-hander in the game, Les McDanger Wallace of Scotland, met another Welsh finalist in the qualifier, Marshall James. As so often has been the case, the first set after the interval proved crucial. For the sixth set, double ten. Double five. Good marker. Yes! yes! That's a sixth set. Les Wallace. Wallace was unstoppable, and when he took the second leg against the darts in the ninth, James looked dead and buried. Which is Liz Wallace as well. 77, treble 19 leaves double 10 for 137, double 10. Yeah! Never flinched. Never Liz flinched. Liz. Yeah, she can feel the, the pressure now building up. 45. Liz will require 130. Yeah, great way to finish. Single 20, but I don't think he's going for it. Wants double top. Yes! 130! Look at him go! Les Wallace, look at the smiles, but that's the man. We say the greatest left hander in the world, the tears, the cheers. If an exciting final was becoming something of a distant memory, the next two revived all the memories of 1992 and that Taylor Gregory epic. Burnett was back in 1998, and so too was Barnevelle. It meant that for the first time since Wilton against Bristol nine years previously, the final was being contested by two players who had been in the final before. The Barnevelle of the 95 final against Burnett couldn't buy a double, but this time he seemed to be in much better form. After the interval, he led by a set, and at two legs each, a fifth leg decider was to become a familiar story. Raven, you require 32. Double 16 for 4-2. Yes. No, 
Now it's just this side, it looked in. 16. Now a chance for Burnett. What a fantastic Ricky opportunity. Five. One he never expected. 96. No, trouble 20, double 18, John. That's a been 3 3, but still got a bit to do. Trouble 20, double 8. One dart, double 8 for 3 3. Yeah. Well, that was That's remarkable. Look at the side, look at him go. Yes, he knew he could have been 4 2 down, but as it is, they cheer 3 3. Ricky require 32. Double 16 for the set. He is 37 sets. He goes into the lead at the right time. Four, three in sets. What a leg this means to both these players. One hundred and forty. So be either five, three, or four, four. Yes. Well, look at him here. Everyone standing, even the lads from Wales. 43. No out shot, but now well ahead. 11 would leave 32. Oh, he's left top. 180. 1, 2, 3, John. Double top left. Yeah, we've, seen, we've seen the nerves play, though, Tony. Such a crucial leg. 98. Raymond, you require 40. They're looking like 4-4, four, four, double top. Yes, that's the eighth set. 89 remain, treble 19 to leave double 16. 99. Missed it, but double Raymond, 12. Raymond, you require 24. This for the set, double 12. Yes, that's the ninth set. Raymond, you require... When the doubles are there, they're hitting them. 140. Well, he's left to finish, Ricky so some pressure now. 32. Double 16. Double 8. Double 4. Yes! That's the tenth set. Ricky he lets it all out, does Bennett. That's an adrenaline you've never seen before. Five, five in sets. We have a thriller. Ricky requires 64. Treble 16, double eight. Single 16, then one dart at the double. Ooh, only just there, but double it is. Yes, that's the third leg. Ricky Bennett. And one leg away from the championship. Game on. Thank you. Back comes Raymond. And he must now, must win this leg to stay alive. He knows it. 140 scored, first three darts. Oh, he's in there. 180, he'd leave 62. Yes, there's two of them. Oh, this. He'll check it. This would just be crucial. 140. Pressure now for the first Ready time for Barney. Shanghai, treble. Still needs the treble. No finish. 100. And now 102 out for Richie for the Richie championship. Treble 20. Bull leaves double 16. Went for treble 14. Grits his teeth. 68. 54. Raymond, you require 20. It's gripping. It's double 10. Yes! That's the fourth leg. Three straight tons for Raymond. Richie needing a big score to maintain his advantage. 41. And he has that advantage now as Barnabas. 92. Went for the ball with the last start. 109. 100. First chance. Raymond, you require 109. Trouble 20. Oh, is it five? So 104. Still treble 18. Oh, he went for 20s. Now Burnett. Ricky, you require 100. Treble 20 to leave double top. Yes, double top. 
to move ahead. Double 10. 90. Gave it everything he had there. Raymond, you require 66. Options, treble 10 or the ball. Double 18, his favourite double. It's yeah. there as well. Barnable in the lead. Raymond to Grofos. Raymond, you require 120. Treble 20. Still treble 20 for double top. Oh, deflection. 25, 95 left. Richie on 460. And he's done it in the championship Richie before. Richie require 160. Certainly has, John. Take it away. Best yes. of luck. Two treble 20s. Well, he can't finish now. Must put pressure on. 100. Still not over. Raymond, you require 76. He knows this could be his time. Double eight, two darts, four. Does he need them? Can he do it in one for the title? Yeah. It's there. It's yeah. there. Look at him, Ray right Barnable. He's yeah. crying. Seldom has the winner shown as much emotion as Barnevelt did on clinching his first championship win. He returned home to a hero's welcome, delivered his last letter as a postman, and became the first ever Dutch professional darts player. Today, he lives the life of a millionaire and has been largely responsible for the huge upsurge of interest in darts in the Netherlands and across Europe. Emotions were running just as high in 1999, but on this occasion, it was the wives who gave full vent to their feelings. None more so than Lisa Mason and Sharon Adams when their husbands met in the quarterfinals. At 4-1 down, Mason looked dead and buried, especially as Adams was well ahead and the leg he needed for a place in the semi-final. You can only smile. One hundred. Not to the ground. Twenty-five. Single nine. Double eight for the match. Double eight. Double four. Seventy. Mason on seventy-six. Chris Yuguara, seventy-six. So travel twenty. Sixteen to leave double top to stay alive. Double top. Way off, shakes his head, knows it's Martin all over more than likely. Eight. Because double four coming in. Double four for the match again. Push the wire in. Four. Well, so near yet so far. Double ten. Mason's crying. Although Mason miraculously won that set, Adams again needed just one more leg for victory in the next. For the match, treble 20. Another treble 20, or will he go for 48? Yes, double top. What an outshot, 148. This for the match. He's missed again, another opportunity gone. This required 56. 16 double top to save the match. Double 10. Yeah. He's done it as well, he's still in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at this, pandemonium. It's surprising how the mental, how the mind changes, John. When you start missing them doubles. And look at Mason. Yes, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> but he's still there, Adams. Another travel. One hundred and forty. Leaves ninety-eight. Mason cannot finish. Only pressurise. Adams. Sixty-one left. Twenty-five. If it's hanging on in there, it's double eighteen. He ran up there to get it out. For the match again. Treble 18, double 12. Double 12. He's missed. Mason on 36 for the set to make it 4-3.
the tender game. Double 18. Double nine. Yeah. Yes, it's there. Well, Sharon can't believe it. She was cheering. Lisa was head down. Set up now. There's a man. Makes it 4 3 in sets. What a match. Not surprisingly, Mason won the next set to level the match. And now, with the darts, needed just one leg for a famous victory. But Adams had already thrown a 180 and was one away from equaling the record number of 180s thrown in a nine set embassy match. Yes, and another. Yes, he's done it! He's on for it! Another chance of a nine-dart finisher in this match. He's Good just luck. equaled a record. 125. Martin He's equaled the record already. Oh, dear. Eric Bristow had that. 1985. But he was looking for that nine data. To take us into a tie break, 18. Double top. We've seen courage, we've seen expressions, we've seen tears, we've seen everything. We're now in the tie break. Well, he just needs a 20 to start. 15 to leave double top. For a 115 to go ahead. Oh, no, oh, this is oh, this five. One double two. Double two. Yes, it's there. Cool as you wish. Legs then went with throw as Mason maintained his one leg advantage. A chance now of winning. Unbelievable. Back comes Adams, though. Don't leave him out. Don't leave this lad out. 140. Oh. 1 2 1 apiece. Mason with the first chance. Trouble 17. That looks like 3. 41. He lost 3. 18. Shut out. Trouble 20. Yes. Well, it'll be a, surely 11. Now the ball. Silence. Oh, lucky. Another chance. Trouble 20, double 10. Double 10, two darts for the match. Double five. 70. Resting on the way. It was there. 25. Nine. Double eight. Take us all the way. Double eight. One to go. 17. Oh, no, he thought it was in as well. He has to sit Where's down for the match. Double five. One, double two. You can feel the nerves. Double two. Six. Back he comes. Martin, you require eight. Absolutely incredible. Well, for five, five, double four, double two. Double one. No score. I tell you, if you think you want nerves, you want to be here now, because this yes, is it. Just take your time. Move in. Double two. Double one. Yes. It's all over. It's all over. There'll be tears in Mason's eyes, he can't believe it. He's deflated, he's gone. What a match this was. You've seen so in that one match, Adams and Mason hit a total of 29 180s. 16 for Adams and 13 for Mason. It was a true embassy classic. 
even if things didn't go quite so well for Mason afterwards. Same night as Chris had played that epic game with Martin Adams, uh, he'd had a tate our tate with his wife and she wouldn't let him in the room. So Chris Mason, who played one of the greatest games ever seen on television, how he spent his night sleeping on our floor. With you snoring. With me you snoring. God you know what I'm dear. like. A possible reason why Mason was swept aside by Barneveld in the semis. And that set up a final against the number two seed, Ronnie Baxter, the Rocket. Baxter's unusual throwing technique made you wonder just how he managed to hit the board so accurately. When he levelled the score at 4-4, Barneveld knew that he would have to dig deep if he was to retain his title. Baxter was poised to win the ninth. They stayed up, so 41 left. One to leave double top and no finish for Raymond Barneveld. Baxter on his favourite double, double top. No out shot for Raymond. And it's got a great chance now for this ninth set. A 5-4 lead. Double top. Double 10. It's 5-4 in sets, it's Ronnie Baxter. Still a bit to do on 70, trouble 18, leaves double eight. Gives him two darts, doesn't need them. Once again, Barney Rubble in the double. Third leg, Raymond two, throw first. Needs them all. One hundred and eighty. Yes, it's another maximum for the record holder. He has to get it. There's a good start. Has to go for treble 17. Unlucky, 84 left. Went for the ball. 102. Revenue requires 36. Double 18. Game shot. And a tenth set. Raymond Martin. Well, the stand. These two players in adoration. Final set, first leg. Five Raven sets two, apiece. Game on. His favourite double, double Ronnie top. Double top it is. Double ten. Double five. 30. It's the first time he's missed in the match. Double twelve. Nerve ends are twitching. Double six. Not for Game Raymond. One double top jump. Well, I would certainly think so. One. Well, he's hitting 18, 23. 23. Must go for seven. He's hit 19, so double two. 37. Well, it's not the best double on the board, Raymond double two. But this could be Andy. Trouble 17, double 16. Double 16, two darts. Bend the wire. Double eight, adjusts. And misses. 67. The nerves are creeping in. You can be guaranteed that. Four. Double two. Equalize everything. Double one. No score. Raymond, you require 16. It's double eight for 2 0 final set. Game it's there. Seven. It came off the barrel. It's 2 0 up. 12 left for Baxter. Treble 20 leaves 64. Treble 18 ball for the title. Treble 18 and living hope. 56. To stay alive. Double six. He's done it. Well, does Ryan go for the ball now? Or treble 17? Must surely go for ball. 16. Bullseye now to stay alive. Oh, unlucky. 66. Revenue required 24. To retain the title, it's double 12. Double six. Still double six. Eight it's two. the hardest double to it. When it's for Ronnie the title. 24. Ronnie still there. 17 leaves double four. Double four. Twice now, Baxter had come from the very brink of defeat. In the fifth leg, he had the advantage of the darts, but trailed heading towards the checkout. Yes, he'll go for treble 20. Can't finish. Ninety-four. That's a good cover shot again. But treble 20, double four. Double four. And that's a break of throw. It is. Yes, you 
could feel it coming. Yes, the 180s are up, but Raymond's still there. This could be another. It is as well. A magnificent response from Barneveld that surely sealed Baxter's fate. 120. Yes, we'll be all 20s here, hopefully. Needs a treble 20 to leave double top. Double top. Just let him down again. For the match, for the title, for the world. 20. Double 16. He's there. He's done it. He's retained the title. Barneveld was the first to retain the championship since Bristol in the 1980s. And he did so in some style with a record-breaking 39 180s in the championship. He also hit the most 140-plus scores, 115 in all. Remarkably, in the following year, Barnabod lost to Chris Mason in the first round of the Millennium Embassy. Mason continued his terrific form by getting to the semis. His opponent, well, he had his own way of trying to put his mark on opponents. It's time for another victim. But it was Ted Hankey who looked to have one foot in the grave as Mason opened up a 4-2 lead. Chris Mason, one set away from the final. But in the second leg of the seventh set, Hankey equaled the tournament match record for 180s. Ted Hankey, 16 180s. <laughs> that helped secure the set for Hankey. And it's double top coming in. Double ten for the set. Yes, game shot. But a maximum from Mason in the eighth gave him a great chance for a 2-1 lead. And fill it up to leave double eight. He's done it. 180. He has a chance for a 10 dark game. That's the uh, <laughs> least dark known. 11's the best. 100. Pressure requires 16. For a 10 dark finish, double eight. Double four. Double two. Twelve. Well fortunate for Chris. No out shot. Ted on one, nine, three. And I think he uh, was really tentative on the last dart. He didn't want to leave double one for his next shot. One hundred and eight. Double Chris two. Require four. Double one. Madhouse or Annie's room. Wow, look at that. Take Lisa can't ball believe ball it. Ball I team. certainly can't. And it's a great break chance. This is just what he needs. Five, double four. Double four. What a turnaround this is going to be. It he is. It's is in as well. Take your require 136. To bring the roof down. Yes, it's on double eight. Oh, he clipped the wire. Chris require 51. Let's put him one leg away. Double top. One to go. Oh, he oh dear, Anki was missing him. Now Mason's Tangier missing him. 16. Double eight. Double four. He is game shot. In the ninth, Hankey scored his 20th 180 of the match. And that's 20 180s. A number 21 came in the very next leg as Hankey won his fifth on the trot. Yet another 180 in the following leg tied the tournament record of 39. It was his 22nd of the match and meant that he'd scored more 180s than doubled. The darts from both players was exceptional. But while Hankey had difficulty checking out early in the match, now it was Mason who was struggling against that relentless Hankey onslaught. He wasn't helped by a comment from the audience. Hits the wire, double ten. Fifty. Oh dear. Dracula. Double top for a place in the final. Double ten. Double five. It's there, it's there. Game shot. The greatest semi-final match you'll ever witness. Chris was beating me up, good style out there. He went 4-2 up. I hit him with everything that I got, and he was 4-2 up. 
And I thought, there's no way I'm going to get through to this man. Every time I hit a 180, he hit a 180. Every time I hit a 140s, it in 140s, 134s, 180s. Back. Incredible. Chris, commiserations, it's a bitter pill for you to swallow. You had it there, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm obviously sick. Um, one thing, I'm a great believer if uh, your name's on pot, lad. And, uh, my name ain't on pot. I've got best player here this week. Um, name's not on the pot, and that's it. Meanwhile, the 1999 runner-up and the number two seed, Ronnie Baxter, hadn't had an easy championship either. He squeezed past Bobby George after a fifth set tie-break in the second round and was then coasting 4-1 in the quarters against Colin Monk. Monk, though, was on the comeback trail. Double ten. Is there? shot! Trouble twenty. Sixteen. Double top for all square at 4-4. Four, four. Yes! At 4-all, Monk went ahead for the first time in the match. Putting one leg away from victory after being down 4-1. There it is! That's the third leg! Colin Monk! Colin Monk has got Ronnie on the ropes without a shadow of a doubt. Just one leg away from victory, and with the advantage of the darts, Monk suddenly couldn't hit the trebles. Feel the tension. 60! Well, now this is opportunity. This is full-fledged. 140 here. Put him favorite to level the match again. 140! Well, there it is. Ronnie Reguard, 94. Treble 18 leaves double top. Double top. Two yes. darts! That's what we wanted. Four blades. Baxter took the fifth, and although Monk had the darts in the next, he was behind and needed to win to stay in the match. Treble 16, double eight. Would have seen it away, but the point is no out shot for Colin, double four for Ronnie. Can only hope. One hundred and forty-five. Match point, though. Ronnie require eight. He waits. He wants double four for the match. Place in the semi-final. It's there. Yes. As Baxter admitted afterwards, the turning point came in the third leg of the final set, when he had ninety-four left, knowing that Mason needed just fifty-six to be one leg away from victory. It was a, I think, a big decision to go for the treble rather than go for the ball, and I thought, well, if I get this. It might just uh, rock Colin, um, and I think it did a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play darts! Please welcome the number two seed, Ronnie Baxter! OK, and his room, or oh, Madhouse. Baxter started disastrously in the final. In the very first leg, he failed with four sets of throws to hit double one. And in the first two sets, he didn't win a leg as Hanky kept hitting the 180s. 180. Three sets to love. First leg, fourth set. And here we go again. 180. Well, you could have put another three darts in there. By the time Hanky was 4 0 up, Baxter had converted just two of his 23 checkout chances. For the ball. And yes, it's there, he can't yes, miss a thing. Ted, you require 20. But this is the one. Double 10. Yes, game shot. And a fifth set. It took Hanky just 40 minutes to get to within one set of victory. But after the interval, Baxter showed some form to lead 2 1 in the sixth. 32 for the set. Double 16. No score. Oh, I thought it was in. And can you believe it? It looked in from every Ted angle, even Roddy's. 20. Double ten. Double five. Going in shot in a full play. And the 60. pressure's off. This Ronnie without Treasure a finish. It's two treble twenties. Ted Hankey. There's one. There's two. The bullseye for the title. 
Yes! What a shot, shot to win a world championship, the NBC World Championship. Sit still on a 170 out shot. Unbelievable. You just don't know what's hit him. An incredible checkout to win the match, and a complete contrast to that first set from which Baxter never seemed to recover. That was a funny leg, that. And I was really nervous with it being my first final I got there, and I thought, oh, God. And I was surprised that Ronnie was missing. But well, he kept going and kept going, and I managed to get it, and I managed to settle down, and Ron didn't seem to settle down as well as I thought he would do. And I set off like a rocket and crashed. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, you, <laughs> was that? did you set off? Well, I did. Uh, straight away, I was 177, 140, something like that. Got down first and started missing. So, and after that, it was just like a steamroller. It was a famous 46 minute 6 0 victory for Hankey, who also shattered Barneveld's previous record of 39 180s by hitting an incredible 48 maximums. He won £46,000, which worked out at exactly £1,000 per minute. Ted Hankey, you have a look at Ted Hankey when he throws. I like John Lowe's, like steady, the same sort of act, but so is Hankey. But a lot of the actions, you wonder how the hell do they throw it? Eric was one. The way he gripped the dog. Well, Eric used some to. of the other, yeah. other people, I mean, like they were Kerry way... Kerry Morgan. <laughs> Kerry Morgan. If you if you film Kerry Morgan, you thought, well, yeah, he's going to throw an hand grenade at you. That's right. Yeah, he looks like he's throwing <laughs> hand grenades. He doesn't throw darts. He goes from here, like... Boom, it was right. part of his character. He's, he's that sort of character off stage, wasn't he? It, I mean, it, it was terrible action. Yeah. I mean, my... It didn't matter because Kerry Morgan hit the turn eight years, hit the doubles. He was he won finals. Well, you've got he was his there. grandson there, Co Stompy. Co Stompy. Exactly got a the funny same action. type of throw. Similar, Always not as bad. Oh, as, not as bad, not as pronounced. More tidy. I think Co is more tidy. Yeah. He's more. He gives it all out a bit. He's, but yeah. Kerry Morgan was down here, I and mean, he was round his waist, yeah. round his head, and then let go of the dart. The 2001 World Championship was the John Boy Walton Show. He had whitewashed the number one seed Mervyn King in the second round and then hit 180s relentlessly in the semis to eventually meet the defending champion in the final. After the previous year, everyone expected Hankey to run away with it again. But at 3-2 up at the break, Walton was in control of the deciding leg of the sixth set. John Newey for 20. It's double 10. Hankey never looked likely to get back into the match as Walton took the next set in the fourth leg. Another set. And then looked to do the same in the eighth to clinch the title. And the chance for the title, treble 20. Yes, treble 17. Yes, bullseye. 136. What a finish that would have been. 25. But it's nine and, or one for double 12. His favorite way. Double six to stay alive. It's not happening. John Walton now 25 points away from being Embassy World Champion. Usually he goes for nine. For double eight. And he's in a 16. He's bust. Did you require six? Oh, it's all up, man. And what an awkward number here. Double three to try and stay alive. Extremely awkward. He may even go for two, double two. We'll see. He's gone for it. Needs one. Double one. No. Four. John, you require 20. He's back to nine, double eight. Again, double eight. Yes, this time it's there. Sure. This time Man, he is the champion. champion. John Walton. Walton. My happiest moment now was funny enough in this year's embassy, 2002, for Trina Gulliver. I mean, I'm very close to Trina. We do a lot of work together, but um, what a lot of people didn't realise, she was under a lot of pressure there. She had a friend of hers called Julie, who, on the day the embassy started, was taken into the local hospice. She only had a few weeks to live here. Beautiful young lady, 34 years of age. And Trina had to go through that. And when she hit that 114. It's 20s first. Yes. 14 would leave double top. Yes, double top for the title. She's going to take her time and give it her best dart. 
It's in. Oh, that's the title. Sure. She's still the champion, the yes. embassy champion. I mean, I was off stage. I'd run up on that stage and sorry to say there was tears in my eyes, but that was probably my greatest moment in dance because I knew what she was going through. And what these girls have done, it's a new way forward. And this is what the embassy's done. One player who, without question, has the skill to be an embassy finalist is Martin Adams, the long-serving England captain. Consistently ranked in the world's top ten, he'd been the number one seed at Lakeside in 1997 and in 2002 was making his ninth embassy appearance. In the semi-final, he faced the unseeded Australian Tony David, who showed no signs of nerves as he romped to a 4-1 lead and kept up the pressure in the sixth. He knows what he's going for, it's the ball. Yes! Oh, oh what a shot! Tony David! Tony to throw first. Adams did take that sixth set and perhaps recalling his 1999 epic against Chris Mason, levelled the match at 4-4. There it is, from 4-1 to 4-4, he's taking charge of the match, Martin Adams. In the ninth, all the legs had gone against the darts. Martin, you require 81. Looking like 2-2. Yeah, maybe an 11 dart leg of his own, needs treble 19, double 12. It's there, the 12 dart leg. Fantastic stuff, every leg. You no, know, Martin started hitting everything and not missing, and I missed a couple of opportunities, and next minute we're four all. And uh, I thought, just keep it together, play the game again, and um, if I get a break, then try and hold serve. Martin required 24. Yes, double 12. Double six to move ahead, 3-2. Double three. Oh, no! 18. You can't do things like that. Not in this Tony championship. 25 or trouble 15. So, 46, option six for double top. He'll have one dart at double top. And Nine he's got it! Charles and a fifth leg. Can you Tony believe that, it. John? Five legs and five breaks. But he must get a treble, must bring that score down. What's oh, a decent outshot if he gets a chance? Yes, 19s now. Yes, I'm the better one. Two in a row. But this for the match. 19s will be first. Oh, 66 left, treble 16 or single. Well, he's hit seven, the shot's off. 59 left, 19 to leave double top. 83. It's still alive, Martin Adams. Yes, the nerves are catching up, but it's treble 10, double 16. He's got two darts at least. He won't miss this. Or will he? One to go. He has done. 46. Martin. It's Tony, Tony David. Boyle, Three darts in hand, 40 left to go to the embassy final. Double top. It's there! The first Australian in the MSC In the final, final, against the fourth seed, Marvin King, Tony David showed the same unerring accuracy as he had against Adams. But then he knew that this was his destiny. I was with my grandmother. At the time, I dreamt the tournaments that I won. It was all in one night. I dreamt of firstly winning the Townsville Open, which happened about four days after I dreamt the dream. The other one was winning the Australian Masters and that took about two or three years before I achieved that and the other one was the Embassy World Professional I didn't know when I was going to get here. You can have a look on the internet. It's been there since last year Trouble 15 leaves double 18 This is for the set Could go for 16 or the treble Looking at double 12 for double. the set Double 9, double nine. Yeah. The dream looked like being fulfilled as a first set advantage was turned into a comfortable 4-1 lead by the interval. If King was to have any chance, he had to win the next set. He managed to take it to two all, but David was first to the checkout in the deciding leg. He's been going for 19s on this shot. There's 57. One dart, double top, it's set. He's there once again. The next set also went to a deciding this leg. Treble 20. Treble 17. It's 
Still not over. 97. My game stayed relatively at the same consistent level all the way through. What I did notice was he improved his darts and went over what I was producing, which on a long game, everybody knows, it takes a certain amount of energy to do that. One dart to save it. It's there! It's a set! King had kept the match alive, and the next set also went to a decider. Treble 20, bull double 16 would help. Treble 14 or the bull. He's gone for treble 14, he's just on the wire of it. Back to treble 20. This is the moment of truth. Treble 19 or the single. 20, then one dart for the embassy crown. Double top, he's never missed it. First time in the match. Mervyn King, you require still there. John. Well, it's double four for 5-3. Can you believe it? Game shot. In the I can not believe it, John. 5-3. Well, we're to witness yet another great embassy final comeback. The ninth set also went to the final leg, with David seemingly in control of his destiny. Mervyn, you require 144. It's 144. Will he go for treble 18 or the treble 20? He can't finish now, he's got double top. Immaterial what this is. He has it now with three darts. Tony require 40. Fingers are crossed by England. It's double top though for Australia. Tony David. The marker is there, he's got two to go. Hold it steady, double top. 20. That is the embassy for you. Mervyn that is what 16. this world title's about. Double eight, Mervyn King. It's Eight's there, out. it's 5-4. Nice what a turnaround we have got. This is unbelievable. The momentum was with King, and as they headed into the 10th set, the Australian must have dreaded going to a final leg. Are we looking at the champion, treble 17? 74 options here. He went for the treble 18. 56 left. 56 in. And I'll leave Mervyn it with you, John. Some real magic needed here. He needs treble 20. Treble 17. Oh, so close. 84 now. 64. Well, he's been in this position. You're sort of thinking, oh, I've got this. The worst, the worst case scenario is I'm, I don't want to choke. I don't want to mess this up and let him in. Double 10, match points. And another. It's Go there! Show. It is there! Match. Look at that, the lads! And Look at that, Aussies! Big smile, what a Tony sport Davis. this is! As world champion over the next 12 months, a lot of people are going to want to talk to you. A couple of people would like to talk to you straight away. I think it's early hours of the morning. Uh, good morning to Alf and Vivian David. Are you there? Hello. G'day, Dad. Hello, darling. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> oh, mate. I, I, I'm over the moon. I'm crying my eyes out. Mum's crying her eyes out. We're, we're really over the moon with this. And, and we wish you all the best, son. You've yeah. been really battling. And you dreamt about this, and your dreams come true, mate. Yeah, thank you. Leighton Reese may have won the equivalent of a new house in 1978. A win in 2002 meant just that for Tony David. I never ever thought that I'd own my own house. Fortunately, with winning the um, championship, it's made it possible for me to own a house and say that's mine and, and know that there's something there for my son in the future. Tony David won the 2002 Embassy Final 6-4 and made yet more history for darts by becoming the first ever Australian to hold the title, proving conclusively that in its proud 25-year history, the Embassy World Darts Championship is a truly global sport, played, watched, and enjoyed by millions. Are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's play darts! The 2003 Embassy World Darts Championship Final. Please welcome, from the Valleys of South Wales, the Land Chop, Richie, David! 
the number two seed, the pride of the Netherlands. Please welcome Raymond Van Bolleda. It's 20s. Has to get a treble with this dart. Yes, double top for the first leg of this final. Oh, 19. Here we go. Treble 20, double 18 for the first leg. Double 18. Double 9. 78. Well, disappointment after getting the first dart in the treble and missing two. Off the hook, but uh, awkward here. Double 15. to go right at it. 15. Nothing wrong with that if you're gonna miss. You had to go at it. 18. Double nine, one double four. A 10 shortening leg. For both 15. players. <laughs> this lad here, Rich, he should be the nervous of the, the two. But he's got another chance for double four. I don't think he'll miss it this time. Seven. Okay, predictions are going for me. require four. Yes, double two again. He looks pretty relaxed on this. Well, double one. Game shot at the first leg. He shook Raymond his head, but Marvin. the effect of it is he, he broke the Second throw. Second it's Raymond to throw first. Trouble 20, double 10. Oh, Richie. 16. The thing is, five isn't Ready too comfortable, especially after you've missed a few darts at double. One for double two. Double two for two nil. Double one. All nerves on. Yeah. But in. Shot. And the second set. Ready by Richie require 107. Set point. It's coming down for 19's first. Straight shot. Yep. 88 left. Trouble 20. No, he's gone for 48. Trouble 16 with a left double top. They'll vary the finishing. 83. But it's 20s. This is a shot Raymond loves. Single 20 for double 18. Double 18 for 3 0. It's there. And a big finish after he's been struggling on the small ones. Sylvia really can look pleased at this stage. 114. Raymond, you require 76. It's double eight, 11 dart leg, potentially. Game shot and the fourth set. Raymond Van Barneveld. As John said, 11 dart finish. It's 4 0 now to Ray Barneveld. It's Richie to throw first. Two set gap we have now. It's 5 3 with Raymond Van Barneveld. to throw first. Trouble 20 to leave 42. 82 could go for trouble 14 for double top or bull. Yeah, well, 19, 19. 16, yeah. 45. This could be the right telling part of the match. 96. Trouble 20, double 18. Stands back, he knows the importance of this one double. Puts him one leg away from the title. Yes, show. it's there. Yeah, big save shot here for Richie. He needs the 20s. Can't do it, but needs to get any pressure he can on Raymond. Well, that might just put a thought. Match points. He waits. He takes his two steps back. He knows. One dart. We're giving the title. Embassy World Champion, 2003. It's there. Shot. Match. And a championship. Ryan Van Barneveld. The tears have flowed. The match was up and down. We saw a fight back from Richard, but I think a worthy champion. Ray Barneveld. Well, he was the most consistent player all week. He certainly was toted as the, uh, as the guy to, to beat, and no one could do it. He showed a little weakness, but he, he uh, persevered. 
And he, he took his time on the key doubles in this set and really made sure of them. And uh, it was impressive with that finish, as well as the one in the leg before. John, watch this go up in the air. He deserves it. Three times Embassy World Champion. And he deserves it from this week, John, I think you mentioned earlier. Well, yeah, and uh, a solid performance to final. It wasn't his best performance of the week, but he did everything he needed to at the end of it, and that's what matters, is winning. That's the bottom line statistic, is being the winner. World Champion, Raymond Van Bonnie Three hours.